schooling behavior, safety in numbers, easy to find a mate, and of course moving the water so moving in unison helps them uh, get around. And these look down fish are displaying schooling behavior. A couple of other fish, there's a burr fish in the back, type of puffer fish, uh, and it's spiky. And then there's a cowfish, another type of box fish that we have right in Tampa Bay. We find them in our seagrass beds. There's our state snail, our state shell, the horse conch. Uh, and uh, we do have a couple of horse conchs in there. And then there is the lightning whelk. Now this horse conch is no longer a snail but it has a hermit crab living in its shell. Hermit crabs have to change shells as they grow, and that's a pretty big one by uh, hermit crab standards, but they need to change shells as they grow. Noting the lightning whelk, you can see this is still a snail, and there's its little trap door. That's called the operculum. So this is a predatory snail, and uh, it does have a trap door that it can close uh, when it needs to. So this is a simulated seagrass bed, another one of our coastal communities, but this is not in the intracoastal, and uh, in this module we study zones. So this is in a, uh, not in the intertidal zone I should say, I apologize. This is in the shallow, either intracoastal, between the barrier islands and the continent itself or other shallow uh, areas and you have to have some soft sediment for the seagrass to grow in. So this is subtitled soft sediment, shallow water, seagrass beds and some of the sea life that is associated with it. In Tampa Bay we have three types of seagrass. Oh look! Look at this dermosal fish here, and its gills are adapted, it's almost uh, leg-like, and it can crawl around. Uh, so sea robins and other scorpion fish have this adaptation, and they can crawl around through the sediment in the seagrass beds.